everybody, and welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. I'm here with Will. Hi. And my webcam didn't break. Nice. Look at that. We're here. We did it. Yay. Yeah. We are, we are in the groove. We are podcasting away, ladies and gentlemen. We're making progress here, you know? Yes. Anyway, hello, everybody. I appreciate you all being here, but a very special hello. To Treville Steinberg with Seven Months, who says, Love catching the podcast on Twitch now. Thanks for the content, fellers. Thank you, Treville. Also, Thank Lizdrin you. for 32 months. Thank you for the primes. Uh, oh, look, it's Eddie with 101 bits, who says, Having a sad day hearing all my friends getting laid. But then he has to correct it and says, Laid off. <laughs> I need some <laughs> laughter right now. Thanks for streaming, guys. Well, that is very sad, but you just gave it to yourself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you solved the problem yourself. I appreciate you. Hopefully we could uh, make this a good time for all of us. Anyway, a bunch of things Especially happened. Especially me, because right now everything is freezing. <laughs> Everything's freezing. You're friggin' doing that clicky thing again. Every once in a while. Yeah, I don't... Your, your your mic clicks. I don't know what that is. I think it's uh, a Discord thing. But anyway, there's a lot of things to talk about today. Okay. Yes. Um, the first thing that we have here is Michael Pactor. Another. Oh, cool. My my keyboard has to connect. Michael Pactor, another industry analyst. We got more beef with more industry analysts here. Uh, some would say Michael Pactor, uh, he works for, I think, Webb Bush Morgan is his company. Some would call him the video game analyst because he's been doing it uh, for like two decades at this point, possibly even longer. He used to have a show on game trailers called Pack Attack, play on words, uh, where we just give his thoughts and opinions on the financial side uh, of the gaming industry and make decisions for companies based on uh, what he thinks are sound business um, decisions. And the one company he's always hated was Nintendo. Because yeah, they never why? listened to him. He, how do, he always found Nintendo's business strategies weird. I mean, yeah. even when they <laughs> even when they worked, though. They, I mean, they're weird. They're a weird company, but somehow they're a they very weird it. company. And I remember him specifically saying, like, Satoru Iwata was a nice man, is a great game designer. He was a shitty businessman. <laughs> Maybe not, maybe not with those words, but along those lines. So, uh, like, look, I'm a Nintendo fan. I like Nintendo. They right. make some garbage decisions sometimes. Yes. Sometimes their decisions are irrefutably garbage, and sometimes their decisions are irrefutably great and positive, and everything's great. Like the yeah. Wii U era, that was was dumb. That was bad. They made a lot of mistakes. The Switch, I think, is irrefutably a good idea, and I think mm -hmm. the sales back it up. Anyway, Michael Pachter here over here saying, Nintendo isn't that smart. Uh, Pachter says, Nintendo should scrap Switch and only have Switch Lite. You know, one of the best-selling consoles of all time. Yep. 30, over 30 million units? How many millions are we at now? Definitely more than that. Well, I, I actually talked about this a lot on Directly to You, the Fanatics 4 podcast that was on last week. I didn't see them tweet that there was... Yeah, I've got to make sure that that podcast is even live. <laughs> Combined, the Switch and Switch Lite have sold 61 million units. 61 million... God! Yeah. That's a lot of units. Uh, specifically, specifically 52.63 million original Switch units. That, so, the directly to you is live. They just didn't tweet it out for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to put it in the chat. Open that in and put it in your watch later. Uh, if you want to hear me, AJ, yeah. and Parker uh, bitch about Michael Pactor for like 45 minutes. Uh, uh, but I'll talk it about says, it here too. Yeah. Yeah. It says, with these numbers, the Switch has surpassed the lifetime sales of the Wii U, the GameCube, the Nintendo 64, and the Super Nintendo. The rate of sales of Super the Switch Nintendo. based on... The 
Uh, the rate of sales on the Switch, based on the number of months to reach 50 million units, has outpaced both the PS4 and the Xbox One, and is on par with the PS2 and the original Nintendo DS. That is The wild. Switch has become the highest selling console in the United States for 22 consecutive months, starting in December of 2018 to October of this year, taking the record from the Xbox 360, which stood for 21 months. That is wild yes uh, so i think it's safe to say that the nintendo switch was a good business decision i'm being told that i'm quiet i don't hello I you sound I, fine on my end i could raise this but i don't think that's gonna help me much hello hello all right well last week you were quiet but i listened you were like a little quiet yeah. I'm very bad with audio, as you could all tell. <laughs> I fixed my buzzing. I had a buzzing last week, and in my video and stuff, I fixed it. Uh, this cable's broken, <laughs> so I replaced <laughs> it with this cable. Uh, much better. Okay, good. I'm better now. Uh, anyway, right. so we have an article here. Yes. Uh, from Nintendo Life, who says. If you were to ask anyone to explain the benefits of owning a Nintendo Switch, we'd argue most would demonstrate the console's ability to, quote, switch between handheld and docked play. It's the entire selling point of the system, after all, and having a console be so versatile can only be a good thing. Right? Wrong! Well, according to WebBush Security's Michael Pachter, anyway, yes, one of the gaming industry's most high-profile analysts has said that Nintendo should scrap the original version of the Switch entirely and instead focus only on the handheld only Switch Lite. All right. In an interview with... So wait, before I go any further, when I first saw this, I was like, okay, this sounds exactly like, you know, like me and you just talking like yeah. at dinner or something. You know, like we're yeah. just shooting it. We're just shooting it off. Yeah, and you're like, I only play my Switch in portable mode. They should just make a Switch Lite, you know? Yeah, like that makes sense. Like this sort right. of conversation. However, right. this is an industry analyst, and he's having an interview with Gaming Bolt. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so this is in like an official context. Yeah, uh, but again, once I read his quote, it sounds like he's just talking to a buddy. Yeah. In an interview with Gaming Bolt, Pactor says, quote, I don't really understand the whole hybrid concept. I don't think most people play it in both modes. I would say that maybe 20% of Switch owners play both modes, and I think most Switch owners play it handheld only. So honestly, don't so I honestly don't understand the whole point of the hybrid. Who cares? Play it as a handheld. See, that sounds like just a dude talking right. to another dude. Talking. I feel like but I feel like <sighs> So it's two, there's two things here. One, it seems like his own biases towards the idea of the hybrid console is what's informing his mm -hmm. decisions. Not the fact that it's been a proven uh, success, the fact that people <clears throat> want a console that does both. And two, when he says that 20% do both, I don't think that's right. Doesn't Nintendo have stats on how people play? And it's like a 50-50 split. So, so that's another thing that's really interesting about this quote is that uh, he throws out a statistic. Being yeah. an industry analyst in an interview, he throws out a statistic that's purely anecdotal. Yeah. Like, maybe don't do that. <laughs> maybe have the facts straight if you're going to do something like that. Apparently, uh, 20... So... There are statistics that say 50%, something around 50% of people play portable and something around 50% of people play, let me, let me back that up. Something around 50% of people only play portable mode or mostly play portable mode. Something like 50% of people mostly play docked mode. Um, no, this doesn't add up. Math doesn't add up. Wait, so I, I'm just <laughs> looking now. Apparently, and we'll go back to the article because there's a little bit more, but on Friday, Nintendo Life put up their own poll. Do you play docked or handheld mode based on what Michael Pachter said? 
And as of right now, 90%, sorry, as of right now, 18% of people polled say that they play the, they play the switch 90% docked with 10% handheld. So the majority of people primarily play it in docked mode. What's the percentage? 18% of people polled say they play it in docked mode 90% of the time. 18%? That sounds like a Eight. really low percentage. It's the highest percentage of people who were polled for this particular out of out of 17,603 votes. Where is this? Here, let me, I want to see this. I'll put it in uh, our super secret Discord. Also, I appreciate people in the chat highlighting their comment to tell me uh, technical issues because it's very easy to see when you highlight the comment. I'm not yeah. being sarcastic either. I know I'm a very sarcastic person. All right, check in in uh, the Discord. Okay. Yep, am I going to be incriminated if I show this? Here we go. I don't think so. Our super secret Discord. Poll, do you play a Switch? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, well, let me vote. Uh, what do I do? Uh, I put 90% handheld mode. 90% docked. Vote. So if you see, the majority of people who voted in this poll play it primarily in docked. Okay, so this is broken up uh, in 10% margins. Yeah. Uh, okay. I understand now. <laughs> yeah, it looks like primarily docked, but I mean, not by a huge margin. No. Um, it also says back in October 2017, Nintendo's own data suggested that 30% of players use the Switch exclusively in handheld mode versus 20% who exclusively play in docked mode, while the remaining 50% switch between the two. That's, that was back in October of 2017. That's the thing that I was that I wanted to... That's yeah. the statistic that I had in my brain that I was trying to put out into the world, and I did it wrong, as I often do. Well, for, from the looks of it, it seems like that statistic is pretty much... You know, it's hard to tell the way that Nintendo Life laid out their poll, but it looks fairly consistent. You know, people do seem to switch back and forth between the two. Okay, so Michael Pactor was just completely wrong with this 20% anecdotal yeah. uh, brain fart, verbal diarrhea. So, um, but he uh, continues. He continues. Things get more interesting with the, with the Michael Pactor. Uh, and Nintendo... Quote, and Nintendo isn't that smart, so you never know what they'll do next. But I think the smart thing would be to get rid of the Switch console and only have the Switch Lite. Get rid of the docking station. Get rid of playing on the TV. Maybe offer a fire stick type dongle for those who do want it to play it on a TV. That's the quote. So Nintendo should get rid of the console that's breaking sales records left and right and center and release a fire stick instead, hmm, says Nintendo Life. Uh, yeah, I don't want to just clown on a guy, you know? Yeah. Like, there's no, like, like leave the guy alone. He's just trying to do his job. But yeah. then he's over here saying that Nintendo isn't that smart. Meanwhile, they're breaking all sorts of sales records and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, come on, dude. It's your job, man. To know this stuff. It, it, it just, it's it's so weird that he's so specifically against the primary gimmick of the Switch. And it's the gimmick that, you know, not only do people seem to enjoy, but people have wanted this for a long time. They wanted Nintendo to make a hybrid system of some kind. Mm -hmm. And they figured out a way to do it, and it works for them. I, do, I don't understand... Like, if he's saying maybe sell a Fire Stick-style dongle for those who want to play on TV, they do already. It's called the Switch Dock, and they include <laughs> it for free in every Switch bundle. It's, it, it, it doesn't, like, like, it doesn't make any sense to me, the, the, yeah. the whole situation. I mean, the Switch Lite is a great offering. It's cheaper. Yeah. Um, uh, some people only want to play it portable that's totally fine it's totally fine if you yeah. if you want that yeah. um but a lot of people 
even myself who plays 90% in docked mode, maybe more than 90%, maybe like 95% I play it in docked yeah. mode. Uh, having the ability to play it portably is a huge selling point to me. It's my favorite thing about the console. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's just like comforting to know that I have the yeah. same game with the same save file and everything. I could just pick it up and take it wherever I want. So, it, it yeah, it's it's the biggest selling point of the system. I don't understand yeah. why you'd want to completely get rid of it, especially when it's doing so well already. Yeah, that that's like saying, hey, you know what the the PS Five and the Xbox Series X should not do HD gaming. <laughs> <laughs> and they should they should just go back to four eighty p style graphics. Nobody needs. 1080p nobody definitely needs 4k just go back to 480p and everything will be fine they would sell so many more units that way there are a lot of people saying just do 1080 don't worry about 4k you can't yeah. even get 1080 right yeah and i'm you know i kind of see where they're coming from yeah no that I, that i can see but you know at the same time you know more and more people have a 4k tv right now they want to take advantage of it 4k gaming is the next logical step this is a complete so. aside, but I saw another prominent uh, industry, I, I want to say journalist, might be an analyst. I saw somebody tweeting today that uh, uh, I don't see a lot of people talking about how uh, nobody's TVs are 120 hertz ready right now. You're not going to see 4K 120 hertz on, your t on anybody's TVs and everybody's going to be really disappointed. And I was like, me, I did that. I said that and everybody was <laughs> mad at me when I said that uh yeah that's that's a thing like most tv especially like 4k tvs with hdr like are pretty much out there like for a decent price but the refresh rates like mm -hmm. that's where they get you the tv i have in my living room uh which i have my ps4 hooked up to for the time being it's 4k it does hdr but it does it maxes out at 60 hertz but it claims it has 120 hertz through some BS like yeah. software acceleration. Yep. So it's not true 120. And I think with my TV in the basement is similar. I think that does true 120, but I'm not sure. Uh, you got them a while ago. Yeah. So they, I don't think they can. I don't think they physically can do the real 120. I know, I know the one about. in my living room definitely can't. Right. Because it needs it needs HDMI 2.1 or at least HDMI 2.0 B, and and that's another thing. Like I actually like was looking for HDMI 2.1 cables, specifically those are HDMI uh, that that transmit data at 48 gigabytes a second, mm -hmm. and they and in my basement i would need them to be at least 25 feet long and they don't make hdmi cables that long for that transmit 48 gigs a second uh, th they would diminish probably probably um so our parents got a new tv uh, yes. on sunday i went with them to get a new tv they had mm -hmm. to get it at costco of course uh my mother doesn't know any other store so by the way anybody who donates 50 dollars to this stream i will re reenact my brother's tweet in an impression of our mother don't do that uh, don't <laughs> donate anything um so th they were they were we were between two tvs uh-huh one of them was an lg mm -hmm. and it was 150 dollars more expensive than a samsung okay the reason it was 150 dollars more expensive was because it said that it did 120 hertz which i didn't really believe i was a little mm -hmm. skeptical about that um but I, you know, they don't need that. They're just watching no. freaking Apple TV on it. Yeah. So uh, we ended up getting the Samsung. But then I was like, because these were cheap TVs too. These were like under $600. Yeah. So uh, the fact that it said that, no, actually the LG was 700. But the fact that it said it did 120 hertz, I was, I was very skeptical of. But I was like, I should have just given them the $150. Because I need a TV that does 120 hertz when yeah. I get the new consoles just to make a video on them. Mm -hmm. But what if I did that and then that TV was fake 120 hertz? You know what I mean? Yeah. We would have been uh, would have been screwed. Yeah. So, yeah, the TV I have in my basement 
uh, does fake 120 as well. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. It has to be fake because HDMI yeah. 2.1 wasn't even a thing. Yeah. Uh, well, they would do, they would sell TVs like with 120 refresh rate for like football and stuff, but they were like you know an extra thousand dollars on the price tag, and they probably weren't 4K. They were. Well, then it's fake. But they, they were just... like, they were. It it was it was extra expensive, and it was mostly for like you know broadcast stuff mm -hmm. it could do the refresh rate but there would be a compromise you probably you probably have could only get 1080p resolution yes exactly yeah. exactly um somebody in the chat encrypted squid luke says 600 dollars is cheap when you're talking about 4k tv that's that's a pretty that's a reasonable price how uh, big is the tv they got 65 inches oh they should have gone bigger it was, yeah, but yeah, it that's, was five, that's a... it was like 530 or something. Yeah. Honestly, the TV I got on the Black Friday special was mm -hmm. around the same price and and everything, but uh yeah. It was a Black Friday special. That's why. And it friggin' broke and I had to I had to <laughs> have a guy come and replace the panel. But yeah, no, I think that's a reasonable price for, and I, I think that's a reasonably cheap price for a TV. TVs that, now—that's not a bad price, yeah. TVs now, especially if you want the, all the bells and whistles, like the latest stuff, you're gonna spend over a thousand dollars. Yeah. Unless you just want a TV to watch TV on, and then you can get something for around five hundred bucks. Anyway, we completely tangented off of Michael Pactor here. Uh, that's because yes. I'm done talking uh, about him. I can care less. Yeah. Uh, we got some stuff here, though. We got uh, Fat Seagull with a Prime sub. I appreciate yous. We got Sarge with eight months. I appreciate yous, too. We got OK Lo-Fi with two months in a row. I appreciate yous, too. We got Dark Type with 45 bits. I feel like the Switch should slash could have started out with two separate systems, a home-based console and a Switch Lite sort of console. Maybe Pactor could make more sense with what he's saying when he's talking about the, quote, Switch gimmick. I think the whole idea is that you switch between the two. Yeah. I, I, I'm not saying that they shouldn't make a, a docked-only Switch now. Uh, but Michael Packer saying they should get away with the original concept of switching between docked and portable, and yeah. I think that's ridiculous. Um, I wonder what he thinks of Xbox and Sony offering discless versions of their consoles because it's a similar concept. True, if you think about it, we're offering two different versions of our systems. One doesn't have a disc drive because you know this is for people who want to stream their games or just want to you know go all digital. And I can picture Pactor saying, people don't want that. You should just get rid of it. Everybody wants to have just clutters of discs lying around. You know, I thought... Not a thing. I thought the Xbox Series S was going to be a huge seller because it's the cheaper one. And, yeah. it's, you know, people just want a Madden Call of Duty box. They're going to yeah. get that one. Uh, apparently, they made a lot less of those. Really? That's what I'm hearing. Because so, Phil Spencer keeps saying, like, he expects to sell more of those. I would expect them to sell more of those. Yeah. But I heard someone saying that they made less of those. Interesting. I don't know how true that is, because, again, I just heard yeah. it from a guy. Um, where am I? Uh, angry, angry Eric with three months? Yes. Yo, Bob and Will, I appreciate you fully, and I'm glad you're around. I appreciate you fully, too, Angry Eric. Yeah. Cries beat with two months thank you and oh look it's eddie with 49 bits i've been seeing sony ads on facebook saying quote it's ready i'm yeah okay sure pal <laughs> <laughs> all right next we gotta talk about fire emblem yes it my computer won't let me scroll why won't you scroll Scroll. Uh, 30 years later, the original Fire Emblem is getting localized for the Switch. Uh, wow. I can't believe it. Uh, Fire Emblem, Shadow Dragon, and the Blade of Light, the game that kicked the turn-based strategy series off, is finally getting an English version on the Switch on December 4th. Uh, the game will be $6 to download, 
but Nintendo is also releasing a special 30th anniversary edition of the game for $50, complete with a replica box, game cartridge, newly localized game manual, map, and 22-page art book. There's a hitch, though, and stop me if you heard this before, that's Kotaku's words, Shadow, Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light will only be available to buy digitally until March 31st, 2021. Nintendo's new Disney-like vaulting system aside, uh, if that's what it takes to finally be able to play Shadow Dragon and the Blade of Light, so be it. Uh, released in Japan for the Famicom back in 1990, the first Fire Emblem saw Prince Marth try to reclaim his throne from evil forces through a sequence of grid-based battles where permadeath would see beloved characters die forever if they fell during combat. And then there's a picture of the collector's edition that you can get with all the cute little trinkets that comes with it. Uh, it, w- it wasn't until the seventh game in the series, Fire Emblem The Blazing Blade, called Just Fire Emblem in the West, was released on the Game Boy Advance in 2004 that fans outside of Japan finally got a taste of Intelligent Systems Tactical JRPG series. Prior to that, people were simply left to ponder the mysteries of which colorful anime uh, hole Super Smash Bros. Melee's Marth and Roy had crawled out of. Anime hole? I mean, they look like they came from an anime hole. All right. Now those two and their comrades have have all but taken over the latest Smash Brothers. It's about time Marth's story got told properly. Uh, and in an update on October 23rd, when asked why Nintendo was only selling Fire Emblem uh, until March 31st, a spokesperson for Nintendo only responded with the following statement. Fire Emblem, Shadow Dragon, and the Blade of Light is the first Fire Emblem game in the beloved franchise, which is celebrating its 30th anniversary through March uh, 2021. We are excited to offer the game localized in, in English for the first time to commemorate the occasion. So that's it. So I was a little confused about this the first time I heard it. I talked about it on the uh, FNAX 4 podcast again. Okay. Um, I thought that the limited edition was only available until March 31st. Are they saying that the actual, the, the one you download off the eShop for $6, that one's only available until then? Correct. That is dumb. That is very dumb. Uh, it's the same thing they're doing with uh, Mario, Mario All-Stars. I don't understand it. <laughs> so the Mario All-Stars thing, I can understand if they then want to take it and sell them individually. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. You you buy it now, you get a physical, it's a limited edition, and you get a deal. Makes perfect sense. This mm-hmm. makes absolutely no sense because how else are they going to sell it other than digitally? They could roll it into Nintendo Switch Online, but then why pay $6 when you could just have it as part of your collection? Yeah, that's, that's the thing I was thinking. Like, it, it's... Because they they just put they've put Japanese games on the American Switch Online store before, um, not store but like streaming service. So I don't understand why they didn't they didn't just include this in there as well. Mm-hmm. They could still sell the commemorative like set and stuff, you know, because they're selling pins and crap for Mario All Stars. So I, yeah, it's it's this is a baffling business decision. <laughs> yeah, this logo is freaking sick though. Yeah. Kiki Smee says it's limited so Nintendo can sell the Japanese version and translation patch separately. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Nintendo isn't one to sell translation patches. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Uh Chris BX says, Does Nintendo know something we don't know about the world ending March <laughs> in March? I think something's happening in March. Something's got to be happening. Yeah. Like, are, uh, the artic- are, are we getting a new console? I'm starting to the think that they're just does... going to throw the Switch out. The article notes that uh, Fire Fire Emblem 30th anniversary uh, just so happens that the last day to get it is also the end of Nintendo's fiscal year. Oh, that makes sense. Kiki- but it still doesn't. Well, it makes sense <laughs> that that's the date. It doesn't make sense why they would limit it. Yeah. 
Kiki Smith says it's a joke. You got to put a little like, like S, you know? Yeah, you put a little sarcasm. Yeah, like the thing, you know? face emoji. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lord Raven says, as a Fire Emblem fan, uh, this is cool, but unfortunately the game is garbage. <laughs> I would have rather <laughs> them localized Fire Emblem 3, which is literally just the same story with a second chapter at the end. Maybe they want to sell a bundle with all three, but then that's the opposite of what they're doing with Mario All-Stars. Yeah. I mean, this is all speculation anyway. Yeah, uh... I got nothing for you. I, it's just, it's so, it's cool that we're getting the first Fire Emblem in North America. That is undisputably cool. It just, I don't understand why you have until the end of March to get it and play it. Yeah. Uh, some, again, something's happening in March that we don't know about. Yeah. He doesn't make enough. But then again, Nintendo's not one to retcon their old generation for the new generation they're always going to pretend like everything's fine and they're going to support the old generation for like a year or two yeah so i don't i think something's weird something weird is happening i mean i i am positive in march we will be getting uh a new hardware of some kind i think it would be super weird if it's a new generation i think that would be insane because the switch yeah. is already doing so well um, it, it would definitely probably just be like you know the Switch Plus or whatever the new Nintendo Switch the new Nintendo Switch yeah if it's a Switch Pro I will jump out the window <laughs> I don't believe it I don't believe that would happen um, anyway this is what the collector's edition looks like uh, replica game pack that looks like it's it's clear it's probably like a clear plastic I don't believe it. that's glass somebody said it was so glass. It's not glass somebody said it's glass it does not look like glass it's got the little uh, yeah. Nintendo plastic little sleeve yeah. like an NES game has uh, replica box instruction booklet and map uh, deluxe art book which looks sick uh, mini Nintendo Power collectible, which looks like a poster, uh, and the box. And that's it. Looks cool. Mm -hmm. Looks cool. How much is that? Uh, fifty dollars. Okay. I would pay that for something like this if I was really into yeah. the game. I'm not into Fire Emblem like this. Yeah, we're not Fire Emblem people. Although, I mean, six dollars for the game, I might just get it because maybe one day. When I'm 50, I will want to play the first Fire Emblem. And oh, I can't because there's no copy of it anywhere. That's another thing. I'd have to go hunt down a Famicom. This is the first... Uh, yeah, and then you have to learn Japanese. This is yeah. the first uh, NES game. Uh, this is the first Nintendo-published NES game that is being sold individually on the Switch. Yeah. So this is kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? Why is it this just being rolled into Nintendo Switch Online? doesn't make sense mm -hmm. but i mean this is people should be happy uh, there's a lot a ton of people that would rather buy nes games individually here's your window now you have an opportunity yeah. to buy a switch game individually um anyway i liked the announcement because it yeah <laughs> it's it's like you ignorant americans you didn't even know who roy and martha was before smash brothers yeah Look at where they came from, this NES game. I'll be honest, when I first played Melee and I saw... I loved Roy and Martha in Melee. Um, yeah. But when I first played Melee, I was like, oh, these are just some Nintendo characters I've never heard of. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I never gave it a second thought. I was like, oh, there's some Japanese garbage. I remember... Re I forget what magazine it was, but it was talking about all the characters in it. And then it goes, yeah, you get to unlock a ca character like Roy. You know, from Fire Emblem? <laughs> not that, that question mark. That really, putting them in Smash Brothers really did uh, get people interested in Fire Emblem. Yeah. It really did. It yeah, really no, was absolutely. a great way to uh, get American audiences to care about something like that. Yeah. Um, that's that. Yep. Uh, it's cool that they're doing it. It's weird that it's limited uh, and it doesn't make much sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. Uh, bike crackling is intermittent. Yeah, I don't know what to do about that. I'm gonna try to get him a new interface, but I don't think it's yeah. the interface. I think it's just Discord. 
I I, ha- I am using a different uh, USB cable from what I've been using because I need to like stretch it to the other end of the computer. So maybe that's it. I it's, don't know. It's I definitely have... a digital thing. Yeah. Anyway, uh, more notifications here. We got Jin Wong who said with five months who says love watching the Wolf Bros. Hello, I love you. Yeah. A little reckless with 14 months. Glad you wolf boys are back. Also, I'll believe there's a TV that actually does 120 hertz when you put out your video about it, Bob, proving it. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show the video at 120 hertz. Yeah. But I'll be able to tell you if it's real or not, just like HDR, Mm -hmm. how that's fake. Did I tell you I saw HDR for the first time when I played Call of Duty Warzone? Oh really? On my own monitor, I was I turned on oh, HDR wow. and I was like, oh wow, yeah. this actually looks different. I think game like game developers now have gotten a lot better at like n- like knowing how to use HDR, right? And putting it in. Uh, I also might have been at 1080p, which is yeah, like real HDR. If if you're so, if you if you're on a current gen console and you're doing HDR at 4K, it does a mm-hmm. weird interlacing thing. So. Uh, I've been playing, I've actually been playing Uncharted 4 uh, on my LG TV up here. Uh, and I like the LG TVs because when it goes into HDR, it'll tell you that you're using HDR. Mm-hmm. Um, and Uncharted detects that and it makes you like set up like all the HDR features in it before you play the game. Um, but to be honest, like I didn't, like, I didn't, I mean, maybe it's because I wasn't playing it any other way, but like I couldn't tell you like what made it like high dynamic range or right not yeah like it looks like all the screenshots I've seen we did the same thing when i did my playstation 4 pro video i brought it over your house and i tried it with uh red dead and it looked exactly the same actually i think it looked worse because it interlaces the 4k so when i played red dead i played that on xbox one through that tv and what i love about xbox one and i think the series x and s is going to be same same thing it has like a setup guide in mm-hmm. there in like the system menu where like it'll scan your TV and it'll just tell you, um, yes, this supports 4K, this supports HDR, this supports this frame rate, it does not support this frame rate and all and all this other stuff. And I love them for that. So it checked the boxes for like HDR, 4K and all that. Um, and when I played Red Dead, whenever it did like the slow, the slowdown kills, you know, the ones I'm talking about? Yeah it would get like grainy. Like there was like the snow effect noise. in in the game. Yeah, noise. And I feel like that's a byproduct of bad HDR usage. It, 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 if I, turn, it, if it, I turn that off, it does. it's not there. That could be like a cutscene. You know, sometimes cutscenes are different frame rates and stuff. Mm. When it does a slowdown, it could yeah. do that. It could be acting like a cutscene. Is the podcast back? No. No. Um, <laughs> um yeah I, I i have faith that the new consoles are going to do hdr like well yeah like the old consoles don't really do it that good i mean but so, so who in the chat just asked uh someone said what is even hdr high dynamic range um it's it's basically uh lighting tricks to make sure you get like the best blacks and like the best whites and like everything in between yeah so uh it gives you more details in the highlights and the shadows. Mm-hmm. Um, when you're doing it on a on a photo camera, like your iPhone, it takes uh, one or two pictures that are overexposed and one or two pictures that are underexposed and one picture that's perfectly exposed. And it lays them all on top of each other so that in the highlights you get more detail and in the shadows you get more detail. Yeah. So it just gives you more detail. Um and I noticed it in Call of Duty right right away when I plugged it in. I was like, oh, this looks great. But unfortunately, I can't stream it like that. Yeah. Because the capture card's going to freak out. Um, apparently, I saw, I think Kevin Kenson uploaded a video that was in HDR. Really? Like, how do you do that? I didn't yeah. know you could do that. I might have to get a new capture card for these new consoles. Um, anyway. Uh, I think we're good. Oh, we got the real MKH with two months. Thank you. Thank you. Mario 3D All-Stars best sell... No. No. Mario 3D All-Stars uh, gets a patch. Yes. Uh, Nintendo of America tweeted, uh, a free software update is coming to Super Mario uh, 3D All-Stars 
on November 16th that adds a new inverted camera control setting for all three games. Um, apparently, uh, inverted camera control is like the number one requested thing for Mario 3D All-Stars because a lot of the original games, specifically Sunshine, had inverted camera controls by default back in the day. Uh, and they don't on the current release for some reason. So Nintendo is adding them back into the game uh, so you can stop pestering them about that. A lot of people w- were mad about this when they got the game. They were, yeah. you know, I personally didn't really notice a difference. Um, I mean, it's been like how many years since I've played Sunshine and like or, or Mario 64. So like it, it did take a while to like get used to it. But like I couldn't remember if it was inverted or not. The only thing that threw me off was when you activate the flood, the the mode that you aim it. That yeah. felt weird. That felt like it yeah. needed to be inverted. And it turns out you can invert the vertical flood controls only. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So Nintendo of America put up a, a screenshot of the controls menu that's coming out November 16th. So this is weird that they did it so early. Yeah, but I think it's because uh, reset era kind of broke the news already. Mm-hmm. So, oh no, Super Mario Thirty Fifth. What is this? Oh, the Super Mario Thirty Fifth Japanese Twitter account. It's an official yes. Nintendo account. They tweeted it, and they tweeted the same thing. So, okay, that's weird that they did this so early. Um, anyway, in Super Mario Sixty Four, you got horizontal camera controls horizontal mario cam so that's when you're doing the first person i don't know why they don't just say that and vertical mario cam interesting uh super mario sunshine you got horizontal camera vertical camera horizontal uh vertical flood controls horizontal mario cam and vertical mario cam lots of options there Mm -hmm. galaxy got horizontal camera horizontal mario cam vertical mario cam they're giving you a lot of great options. This is great. Yeah. This is this is great that they updated it. Uh, they saw a problem and they were like, we're right on it. Because this is an easy fix anyway. It's just a control thing. Yeah. Uh, I'd be interested to see if they add, uh, for Super Mario 64, modern camera controls. <laughs> that was my biggest hope when they announced the 3D collection. I just wanted yeah. actual full free look rotating camera. And that just, they just did, did not, not happen. That. Yeah, it's very unfortunate. Uh, you know what would be cool if they patched Sunshine to be a good game. Anyway, uh, Mario 3D Burn. All- Turns out, Mario, despite all of its flaws, Will, Mario 3D All-Stars is now the biggest digital launch for a Mario game on the Switch. Which is insane when you consider all the other Mario games that are on the Switch. <laughs> it's also one of... I think it's the number six best-selling Nintendo published game of all time. Yeah. It's insane. It's crazy like that. Something, and and, uh, I think five out of the six are Switch games. Yeah. I think the only one that's not is, uh, is Brawl. Probably like Wii Sports or something. Or yeah, Brawl. Brawl. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they counted Wii Sports. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, this is Nintendo Life again. Digital video game sales have reached an all-time high this year. Just last week, for example, FIFA 21's digital sales in the UK outsold physical purchases at launch for the first time ever. Now, according to Super, da- Super Data's monthly report for September, Super Mario 3D All-Stars has set a new digital sales record for Mario games on the Switch. <laughs> the game reportedly sold 1.8 million digital copies in its opening period meaning it outperformed the digital sales of Super Mario Odyssey, Super Mario Maker 2, and Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. Now, uh, Mario Maker and Mario U Deluxe, people are always like, oh, those games are stupid. Those games sold an insane amount. Specifically, yeah. Mario Brothers U Deluxe, which people already played on the Wii, on the Wii U, so like Mario yeah. fans like don't need... They're like, oh, that's stupid, I don't need that. It sold so much. I just heard a weird crackling. Did you do something? No. Something happened. 
Sorry to your ears. Uh, anyway, no other information was provided, but we're guessing sales have been fueled partly by nostalgia and the fact that uh, the fact this is a limited time release that Nintendo says will be removed from the eShop at the end of March next year. Earlier this week, NPD's industry analyst Matt Piscatella, here he goes again, shared his own theory about what might happen to each of these games uh, in the th uh, 3D All-Star. Oh, wait, no, this is the guy. This is the guy we talked about last, last week. week. This is a different yeah. guy than Michael Pachter. Okay. Yes. They're different people. What is disconnecting? Stop disconnecting my freaking webcam again. I got it. Maybe my USB port's messed up. Um. Anyway. Uh, I don't think these games will disappear like what would happen with the old school Disney vault, but I think there will be additional flexibility in buying options. For example, a la carte purchasing options on the eShop. Yeah, duh. He also noted how strong sales and demand for 3D All-Stars should give Nintendo additional confidence in bringing other legacy titles to new platforms. Okay. Mm -hmm. Was that last article where I saw... Where did I see that 3D All-Stars is one of the best-selling Nintendo I know. Games? I know it's been posted in other articles about that game. Because I've seen the same... I've seen the same data as you. Oh, I just want to make sure I get it right. Best-selling game in September. Yeah, yeah, we know that. Uh... Second best-selling game of 2020 already. Damn. On Amazon, so it's in just... Just in total, it's the second best-selling game on Amazon. Uh, what's the first? I'm going to guess Animal Crossing. Probably. Yep, only behind Animal Crossing. So I think Nintendo's <laughs> crushing it right now. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't know where the rest of that information is. <laughs> anyway. Hey, La right. LaCroix X, thanks for the Prime sub. Thank you. Bob's tech loves him and shows appreciation, LOL. Tell me where I can get that. Yeah, it tells <laughs> me at the worst times. Leave me alone, my, my technology. I'm trying to do a show here. Uh, why are we talking about my Japanese abilities? <laughs> Who's talking about that? Nick T. Official says, from what I've seen, Bob can read katakana and hiragana for the most part. Uh, I can sound it out, and I'm losing my ability to do so. <laughs> I haven't been keeping up with that. You, you, should, you should get back in practice. Next uh, next game you get, just put it to Japanese setting. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what I want to do. Yeah. Um, would there be more than one guest on this podcast in the future? Uh, maybe. Right now, I want to try doing one-on-ones with other people. But uh, as you know, as we get into it, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. We're just yeah. starting this thing. Subscribe and stay tuned. All right. Anyway. Uh, hey, look at this. Power A makes Mario 35th anniversary controllers, and they actually look pretty cool. Well, uh, you know what? I'm well, gonna I'm gonna pull up Hori's. <laughs> All but one of them looks pretty cool. I think. We'll see if we agree. Will okay? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna pull up Hori's first. Okay. I hate these. <laughs> um. This. These are. These are dumb. Are they both Hori? Yes, they are. These are sad looking. Right. This one looks like a knockoff. It looks like something you'd find in like a like a friggin you know, like like I don't know, like Tri County Flea Market. You find something right. like this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now these are much better. This one's a little loud. It's very loud. <laughs> uh, Mario Pop. I see what they try to do with the little halftone in the background. Yeah. They try to make it like pop art. 
Not yeah, no, I don't. I don't like it. It's too. It just looks like a whole bunch of art assets smushed together in a really close proximity, with no rhyme or reason. You know, you're making me like these less. Uh, <laughs> this one's kind of well, cool. The star one. Yeah, no, the star one is nice. The star one reminds me of like, uh, like seventies posters. Like, um, there's like a, an Atari one. I think you have a Star Wars shirt that kind of looks like that. It's the color scheme. Yeah. Yeah. It's the color scheme, but also too, like the lines down the middle. Yeah, that's very retro. Th this isn't bad. This I kind of like. Uh, yeah, this is cool. This one, yeah, this one's not that great. But it is the Power A GameCube controller, which is pretty good. Uh, I don't mind this. I like I like the color scheme, and I also I kind of like the the pixelated art in the middle of it. I I don't. Right. And uh, well, first of all, it's the black and red of not not having it. Uh, the little pixel expo explosion is okay, but then why mm. isn't Mario the Mario One Mario? If you're gonna do pixel explosion and then have a cutout of Mario, that's a good point. Make it a maybe pixelated they, Mario. Like maybe without. they couldn't get access to the pixelated Mario. They Nintendo would only let them print regular Mario on it. That's garbage. They have designs with Mario One Mario. Also. This is lazy, is what it is. Because if you do the pixelated Mario, you have to line up the pixels. Right. Uh, yeah. So, I'm going to start designing controllers. She Good. decided. Uh, oh, I forgot to check if Xbox Game Labs closed down. Oh, the design lab for the making design controllers. Design lab, that's what it's called. Yeah, because I had controllers saved, and they were offering you like a discount. If you ordered a if you ordered a controller through them, but I'm like, I'm not like I already have too many Xbox controllers for a system I haven't played all year. They're probably gonna relaunch this when the Series X comes out. So if I ever get a Series X, just wait and do it again with the newer controllers. I really hope they don't. I really hope that they make the new controllers and they make they allow you to do an Elite controller. I would pay a that lot would be more. Nice. Yes. To do an elite controller that's just yes. custom made for me, that would be yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, Fred says, "Will Design Lab is closed right now." Okay. Rip you. So I, I, you know, I think it is coming back, but they have to like reboot it for the new system. Um. PS Five controllers are going on sale October thirty first. Interesting. At Best Buy, at least. Um, so yeah, I might get one. Bra, someone posted a video on Discord and it was interesting. Could somebody go to the Discord and moderate that, please? <laughs> All right, what else do we got? Uh, we got uh, Twitch streamers threatened by DMCA takedowns. All right, so I'm going to give you my uh, personal uh, experience. That, well, it, it's not a personal experience. It's just what I've heard from other people. Like, So this, is hap this has happened multiple times, and they always say mm -hmm. uh, the streamers always freak out that they're going to be targeted. So Twitch... Uh, Twitch every once in a while will scroll, will scrub through all of your uh, past clips and vods and stuff, and will just start deleting them. Uh, lately, they've been issuing DMCA takedowns for people mm -hmm. and emailing them and saying, "You have made a violation. Uh, don't do this again." And it's it basically like you're playing copyrighted music or you're playing a video that's copyrighted. Yeah. Twitch flags it and then they take it down. Um, and now they've been issuing kind of strikes against streamers for for doing so um all these streamers freaked out everybody started deleting their old vods or their old clips and stuff um or trying to download them and save them somewhere um nothing's gonna happen especially if you haven't been playing copyrighted music you should be fine i feel like a veteran when it comes to this because <laughs> i've been on youtube and that's all yeah. it is is copyright strikes and dmca takedowns um I think so Twitch has been really lax on copyright for a really long time and I think that's kind yeah. of why they wanted to focus on video games was because uh, they don't have to worry so much about copyright 
as much as YouTube does anyway, but any platform that is going to have user generated content really has to crack down on copyright because they are going to get sued yeah. out the ass by these copyright holders whose sole job is to sue companies who infringe on their copyright. Yeah. And a lot of times it's not even like necessarily the copyright holder. It's a third party right. that they hire to crack down on it. That's why you will see sometimes it won't say, you know, Warner Brothers. It'll say, you know, dumbass securities <laughs> breathing or whatnot. Yeah, it's a third yeah. party whose sole purpose is to do this and make money yeah. cracking down on everybody. Um, yeah. So they're being forced, Twitch is being forced to do this. Um, and it makes sense why. The only pro the only problem Twitch is, has, my only issue with, okay, great, my freaking computer's freaking out again. My only problem with the way Twitch has, has handled this is that they haven't done this sooner and they haven't warned content creators. Yeah, there was there didn't seem to be like a real good plan involved to tell people that this was happening. No, and and supposedly these copyright holders uh had these copyright holders uh apparently were trying to reach Twitch about these copyright mm -hmm. infringements and Twitch was not responsive. Uh which is very like Twitch. Twitch is yeah. the the management at Twitch is try to talk to somebody at Twitch. It's like impossible. Which is weird because they, they're an Amazon owned company. So you would think with all the, the billions and billions and billions of dollars that Amazon has on hand that they would be able to, you know, help Twitch out and find a, a way to compensate the these copyright holders and also, you know, put initiatives in place and hire people to tell their streamers that, hey, we have to take, you know, copyright claims seriously now. This is one of those things that, uh, you know, like the higher ups at Amazon don't mm -hmm. really care about Twitch. They're like, ah, whatever. Yeah. It's that thing. It's making money. It's doing fine. Let them handle yeah. it. Then they hear something about this, like they get sued by somebody. Yeah. Then they crack down. Like, okay, Twitch. Yeah. You're that, you know, you're, you're that uh, friggin' uh, stepson that we didn't really care about. <laughs> now you have a problem and we need you to fix it immediately. And that's a bad thing. It's a bad thing when uh, it's a bad thing when uh, your your boss recognizes you only for negative stuff. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I guess we should read the article. Yeah. Uh, Twitch DMCA strike causes panic as streamers worry their channel would be banned. This is according to IGN. Uh, I don't want to read the update first. Oh, the update is long. This whole thing's long. I'll read the I'll read the original story. Last month, Twitch streamers found themselves hit with a wave of DMCA takedown requests for clips that feature licensed music. For creators with hundreds of clips saved featuring various music in the background, this became a huge headache as they were asked to manually remove violating clips, which for some could be as as many as hundreds of videos saved. I don't understand. Like, okay, Twitch again has been really lax with copyrighted music mm -hmm. in the past really all it was was if you're playing copyrighted music they'll mute it in the vod but you could still play it live right um right and so people just played copyrighted music all the time i don't understand why especially if you're like a big time streamer and this is your job why are you why don't you think like use your brain like you can't play copyrighted music to thousands of people without paying a license the problem is, like, a lot of these people just don't think when they do it. They think, oh, I like to listen to music when I play video games, which is weird, but okay. <laughs> uh, so I'll just play music while I play video games in front of, like, an audience of people and make money off of it. It just, it's, but, like, they have to know that there's licensing fees for stuff like that. It's, it's, on, it's kind of on Twitch to tell them that. And that's where Twitch yeah. went wrong. Twitch didn't say, no, you can't do this. They kind of just let it happen for a long time. Um, anyway, what is DMCA? The Digital Millennium Copyright Act is a federal law that's become quite 
infamous with the rise of social media services, particularly YouTube. I don't need to read this. We, everybody knows what a DMCA takedown is. Uh, yeah. Twitch's DMCA guidelines. Twitch's guidelines on DMCA states that it is our policy to respond to clear notices of claimed copyright infringement that fully complies with the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. In addition, we will promptly terminate without notice the accounts of those determined by us to be, quote, repeat infringers. So it sounds like you're screwed if you have like a lot, if you do it a lot. And yeah. I feel like people who are like listening to music while they're playing games, they're going to do it a lot. How does DS DMCA affect streamers? The Digital Millennium Copyright Act is infamous, but it's also misunderstood. The act primarily protects the interests the interests of the copyright holder while also giving protections to digital platforms that would pre previously be liable for hosting copyrighted content that was uploaded without their knowledge. Uh, quote, most people think of the DMCA as something used against infringers, says David Hope, managing partner of SF-based tech uh, media tech law firm Gamma Law. This is a person who probably has to prosecute a lot of DMCA people, so that's why yeah. he's talking like this. But actually, DMCA takedown requests are not set to infringers. DMCA takedown requests are sent by copyright owners to sites that have content posted by users, and that content infringes the copyright. This could be a product review on Amazon, an, ease, an essay posted on Medium, or a YouTube video, for example. The purpose of the DMCA is to protect those platform owners like YouTube or Twitch from a liability from the copyright holder in case a user on the platform posts infringing content. Quote, any legitimate site will take a uh, takedown request seriously and notify the users to take the content down so that the site will not have the risk of being sued by the copyright owner, Hope says. And that's where Twitch went wrong because they didn't take the claim seriously. Mm-hmm. Is there free music Twitch streamers can use? Yes. Yes, there's free music. Uh, you can find it find it on your own time. <laughs> what can content creators do if they're hit with a DMCA takedown request? Hope says that creators like streamers can send a counter notice through the platform and their content will be put back up. What? The copyright owner then has a limited time within which to file a lawsuit against the user. So if the creator gets a counter notice back, they have to decide quickly whether it's worth escalating to a lawsuit. Otherwise, the content could just stay up indefinitely. How about just take the VOD down? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, update. Twitch has uh, proceeded to delete a wave of videos from partnered streamers earlier this week in its strongest action against copyright content yet. Streamers had no say in Twitch's decision to mass ban content found on uh, to include copyright infringing material. Streamer Devin Nash posted an email they received from Twitch that informed them and many others that their video has been deleted. Quote, we are writing to inform you that your channel has su was subject to one or more of these DMCA tech down notifications and that the content identified has been deleted. The email states, we recognize that by deleting this content, we are not giving you the option to file a counter notification or seek a reaction from the rights holder. So that's another issue that Twitch is making. It's another, yeah, <laughs> it's another no, no on Twitch mm -hmm. because they're not giving you the chance to, uh, to claim that it's fraudulent. Like YouTube yeah. does at least YouTube. So when YouTube gives you a copyright, a DMCA notice, it's all it's mostly algorithmic yeah. so it's like they detect that you have copyrighted content and a lot of the times it's right yeah um but you can dispute it yeah you can fight it you can say you know that you're not trying to infringe on anything you can claim fair use if you're writing a critique or a parody or a review or something like that um there are ways to help you with it and, and it won't outright take down the most times it won't take down the video you just can't make money off of it right what twitch seems to be doing is just straight up deleting everything that could be deemed as copyright infringement yeah the, uh, it took youtube a long time to get their dmca system in a way that uh is kind of uh, good for everybody it's still not uh -huh. perfect but yeah. uh in today's youtube landscape if you get a DMCA notice, um, actually, it's not a DMCA notice. It's it's just a copyright it's a, claim. Yeah. Uh, the money gets put into uh, escrow, 
for, for the money for the video gets put in escrow and you can uh claim that it's a fraudulent claim you could say no mm. this is my work or it's it, what often happens is the rights holder is not actually the rights holder yeah um so then youtube will look at it manually and then decide whether or not decide who wins yeah. and then they take the money out of escrow and give it to the winner basically um and i think that's an okay system it's much better than whatever twitch is doing right now yeah twitch is just basically saying like hey we deleted your videos sorry yeah uh and they could just straight up ban you from twitch if you do this too much yeah. which is something that they do on youtube also if you're sitting there uploading full movies like yeah they're gonna delete yeah. your account um so yeah uh if this is a thing that was inevitable if they're just gonna let you keep uh yeah. it looks like you have a vape oh it was a pen <laughs> <laughs> There is so I was trying. I was trying to get through that as quick as possible because uh, I want to talk about Alex Hutchinson. Oh yes, in related news, you have his tweet. Okay, I so, have his tweet. Yeah, why not go right to the source? So this is a guy who works at Google Stadia or something. So he is uh, his. Uh, profile used to say that he was a creative director at Google Stadia. He's a creative director at a game studio that Google owns to make Stadia games. So his so he doesn't, his he doesn't problem, work for Stadia proper. His problem was that in his bio when he wrote this, it said that he worked for Google Stadia. He was a creative director right. at Google Stadia, which was apparently right. not correct. It's that's correct with an asterisk. He's a creative director at a studio that Google owns to make games for Stadia. Right. So he tweeted two tweets. First mm -hmm. one, streamers worried about getting their content pulled because they used music they didn't have to pay for should be more worried by the fact that they're streaming games they didn't pay for as well. It's all gone as soon as publishers decide to enforce it. Now, I actually agree with this. I actually think that, yes, streamers should be worried that, I mean... They paid for the game, but they're not yeah. paying for the license to they're show. They're not paying for the right to stream the game. Yeah, and it's been a long-standing, uh, like, like a just, uh, like it's been an unspoken it's, law. It's a gentleman's agreement, basically. Yes. yes, it's like a handshake agreement. The game publishers will allow you to stream their games uh, without any sort of repercussions. Uh, because ultimately they view it as promotion for their game. In most cases, it is very beneficial for the uh, for the game publisher to yeah. have a streamer or a, a let's player or anything stream yeah. their game because uh, it gets it's free advertising. Yeah. In some cases, it might not be like uh, there was a there was a game. It was a narrative driven game. It was a few yeah. years ago. Uh, PewDiePie and a couple of other those people did a let's play on it and the developer was it was like a one-man team he was very upset yeah. that almost nobody bought the game but millions of people watched the let's play mm -hmm. and they had no incentive to buy the game because they just watched the story play out yeah i think the onus is on uh the cre us creators to leave out the end of a narrative driven game or something give give people an incentive to buy the game you know but yeah. but if it's something like uncharted or like uh a, a better case call of duty warzone or freaking uh mario maker any of those things streaming it is going to give people incentive to want to play it yeah um but right now there's so there's also nintendo who right for a long time uh, had their own creators program and they would DMCA all of your stuff. Like I only ever got like two, like one or two copyright claims on actual videos, like actual Wolf Den videos for Nintendo stuff. And I think it was always Mario Maker. Yeah. However, for live streams, 
almost every time I streamed a Nintendo game, I would get a I would get a note uh, I would get a copyright claim from Nintendo. Um, they don't want you streaming their stuff, or they yeah. didn't for a long time. They didn't. They've laxed on it a lot, and I think you, basically you're allowed to stream their stuff now. Um, there's a while when most most Japanese companies like uh, Capcom had a th- had a thing they didn't want you doing it. Sega had didn't want you doing it. I think Konami actually still will regularly take like issue uh, copyright claims for like videos critical of Konami. <laughs> All of those companies uh, still issue takedowns if you play like trailers and stuff. Which is yeah. why we try not to play too many trailers on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Nintendo had a program. I think they gave you thirty percent of your ad revenue if you uh, streamed their games. If you were in the partner, yeah. the Nintendo Partner Program or something. Yeah. Uh, they since got rid of that program because they realized it was stupid and everybody hated them for it. Mm-hmm. So now they're a lot more lax. Uh, but the moral here is that these games are copyrighted, and you are using the copyright without a license. Right. And that's kind of scary as a content creator with your whole like livelihood being a gentleman's agreement. You know, mm-hmm. like at any point five well, Epic could be like, Hey Ninja, we want we want licensing on all of this stuff. I, I think also too, there's um there's a part of copyright law called fair use, and part of that is if you uh transformative media, if you transform the content in a significant way uh, to make it different from the original form while he's still using elements of the original form, then that's allowed. And, you know, game streaming and let's plays and things like that, you know, you're taking an interactive media and making it Mm non-interactive. That's pretty transformative on its own. And that is covered by fair use. However, you know, the more expensive, the more powerful the lawyers are, you can kind of like argue that it's not fair use and game companies have those kind of lawyers. So, so, but, but again, for the most part, like they've been very lax on it. Well, what's stopping them from, well, most of the time when you get a copyright claim on YouTube, it's for the audio because that's just easy for them to, uh, to detect. So there's nothing stopping Epic from deciding that the audio is the copyrighted material and right. that's not transformed at all it's just right. the audio you know you're not mm-hmm. taking the the game it, taking the game and making it a visual medium is i guess could be argued as transformative even though it's like barely transformative right um but it, they, they just ta- they would just tackle another aspect they could even oh. tackle the visual aspect and say that here's the you're taking our characters and putting them in front of a bunch of people well, and we usually don't want them. it's it's the work as a whole they don't right. like yeah they'll they'll use specific aspects to like find a copyright claim but when you transform a piece of media you're trans it, that includes everything the visuals and the audio so yeah but they can just take a piece of their copyrighted material and say we don't want you using this now give us a bunch of money I mean, they really fair use is is fragile ground. You can't just yes. claim everything's fair use, you know. Right, and I'm not saying that people should. I'm just saying that a lot a lot of people consider game streaming and let's plays and things like that transformative and transformative enough to to warrant fair use. Right, that's I, what I'm saying. I think that it's it will not hold up in court if you're just doing a let's play or especially a live stream because you're not right you're just it's just you in the game you know you're not editing it or anything right um so as a content creator it's scary to have all of your livelihood held on a gentleman's agreement Um, yes in my case i'm fine i do mostly tech reviews like yeah there's no freaking i if i can't put gameplay on the screen for the rest of my life i think i'll be all right um anyway so far, Alex Hutchinson, uh, he doesn't say anything too crazy. It's a controversial take, but it's not uh, not necessarily a bad one. The only thing I don't like about his first tweet is that he says uh, they're streaming games they didn't pay for. They paid for the game. They just didn't pay for yeah, the license. That the should have been clarified. It's it the... was definitely it was definitely a snarky tone. Yes, but you know you can sort of see where he's coming from. It is the second tweet. That is the problem. Oh my god, everything's freaking out again. We'll read the second tweet. 
the real truth is the streamers should be paying the developers and publishers of the games they stream. They should be buying a license like any real business and paying for the content they use. So the problem here is that he said should be paying the developers. Yes. Instead of could be paying the developers. <laughs> <laughs> like he's he's taking the stance of the developers or publishers because mm -hmm. he is a game dev um that is why everybody's mad and everybody was quote tweeting the second tweet yeah nobody really cared about the first tweet because the first tweet you know he didn't really say anything wrong the second tweet he's taking a stance and he's putting it behind the developers saying you you streamers should be paying us to play our games in front of a bunch of people he's completely ignoring the fact that there's so many games like for example fortnite that wouldn't be as big as they are without streamers behind them yeah uh someone in the chat before encrypted squid luke says the game that i was talking about that pewdiepie streamed and a bunch of people streamed that was nato yeah. driven was that dragon cancer and i remember that yeah yes uh super parte poopa in the chat says so just to make it clear the license to own the game is separate from the license to stream the game correct it's just like a movie if you yes uh, you can buy a movie but it doesn't give you the rights to play it in front of 100 people yes when you when you buy a blu-ray or a dvd or even like a movie off of itunes the license is for home viewership it doesn't mean that you can then take that same blu-ray to a, a, a movie theater and project it for people to see and you charge money for it that's right. not what you can do with the it. thing is with streaming you are first of all you're putting it out there for anybody to look at um mm -hmm. that's equivalent to distributing it uh also you are putting ads in front of it presumably uh so mm -hmm. you are making money off of it uh and again it's always been like a gentleman's agreement that it's good publicity and it's advertising to let people do that um I think that there should maybe be some sort of like, uh, I don't know, FCC regulation or something to protect everybody in this case. Right. Like protect the streamers and the content creators and the publishers and everything. Because right now there's no nothing written. It's just people or I'm sorry, publishers should come out and say, we support streamers and blah, blah, blah. That way we know which ones yeah. we can play games for and which ones we can't. That's something Nintendo will never do, but something like Ubisoft right. might do. Or, you know, maybe some a company like, oh, I don't know, Google, <laughs> who owns the largest video streaming service in the world, who built in game streaming capabilities into their game streaming platform should probably like say something about this yeah and say that you if this is okay with us you can do this they they have come out and said that like we don't agree with this man's thoughts and opinions and whatnot but i mean be better about that yeah here's kotaku saying google backs slowly away from stadia guys very bad tweet uh oh jason schreier also said i don't know maybe you're getting flack oh wait oh alex Hutchinson said amazing to me that people are upset at someone saying that the creators of content should be allowed to make some of the money from other people using their content for profit and then jason stryer said i don't know maybe you're getting flack because you're picking this particular battle in a world where c-suit executives make 30 million a year and devs don't get royalties so they'd never see any of that streaming money in the first place got a point uh ryan wyatt who is uh the lead of youtube gaming or something um yes. he said we believe that publishers and creators have a wonderful symbiotic relationship yes that has allowed a thriving ecosystem to be created one that has mutually benefited everyone exclamation point youtube is focused on creating value for creators publishers and users all ships rise when we work together and he's correct i just hope that the publishers play along because again any at any moment the publishers can rip the rug out from under you yeah Where's the Google Stadia tweet? Didn't they make a statement or something? 
they didn't tweet. They made a statement um, to nine to five Google saying uh, a recent tweet by Alex Hutchinson, creative director at the Montreal studio of Google Stadia uh, does not reflect those of Stadia, YouTube or Google. There you go. So Google's like, leave us, leave us out of this. Stop saying stuff. Again, it's because of the snark behind his tweet and the way that he picked sides. Yeah. That's the, that's really the only reason why uh, everybody was mad at him. Yeah, he could have just left. He should have just left at the first tweet. Then no one would even mm-hmm. care. All right, we got oh look, Teddy with fifty bits who says, according to Twitter account IGN, we are getting a quote Godzilla costume on Fall Guys on November third for a price of ten crowns. I'm curious to know why the partnership thoughts. They're just fall guys will just take whoever they can get, honestly. And I think, yeah. <laughs> I think publishers or I think companies should be, you know, jumping on that because it's just awesome for everybody. Same thing with Fortnite. I, I bet you, for, I bet you, some of these big companies realize that um, the partnerships with Fortnite are really working out, like the Marvel partnerships and the well, Warner Brothers partnerships and stuff. Yeah, now there's going to be a Ghostbusters partnership mm-hmm. with Fortnite. Yeah. Um, there was a Sonic the Hedgehog costume for Fall Guys. I don't think that's so out I, yet. I, I, yeah, but I can see like Fall Guys might be the next Fortnite in terms of partnerships Part- that it it gets. You know, mm-hmm. that would be great. Yeah. Uh, f- Faxus. Oh, thanks for the host. Oh, also, I did uh, I think we got a raid, but it didn't come up. I saw a bunch of Willows I- people in here. I th- I thought those are just people celebrating the fact that you were uh, purple. Oh. <laughs> well, anyway, thanks for the raid, Willow. If you actually raided me, I can't tell. Yeah. Um. Anyway, Chris BX with the twenty eight months. I appreciate you. You. We gotta plow through these next couple here. Uh, okay. Oh, we. Yeah, it's not too many. Ten X Cloud games get touch controls. Why? Uh, well, because you can play it on your phone. <laughs> I love that, uh, how easy it is to do Game Pass on the phone. It's yeah. so great. And, you know, honestly, touch controls for certain games, that's great. Like, um, so, so like, I remember my first experience with remote play was mm-hmm. Destiny 1 with my PlayStation Vita. I was away from home, and they just announced the Hawk Moon which is the gun I was trying to get for a whole year was mm-hmm. just available for purchase at the shop in the game. And right. I wasn't home, but I had my Vita mm-hmm. so I could just open it up, go to the shop and buy it without being home. If I right. had to use touch controls, I would have been fine with that because I'm not actually playing. I'm just going to the shop in the game. You know, I'm just managing stuff. Right. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. having touch controls for certain yeah. stuff like that. Um, the games in question are Minecraft Dungeons, uh, Hot Shot Racing, Tell Me Why, Streets of Rage 4, Undermine, Hellblade, Senua Sacrifice, Slay the Spire, Killer Instinct, Guacamelee 2, and New Super Lucky's Tale. That's a weird collection of games. It's a weird collection of games. Games like Streets of Rage, uh, Guacamelee, and Killer Instinct, those are like you know, fighting and brawler games. Those are games where like you need like good input and touchscreen is notoriously not as good as a physical controller for this respect. So I'm curious to see how, how responsive this is. Your mic is freaking out. Uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. You are being muted for a second. Uh, in the, it, they have a dead cells. That's dead cells in the, in the thick i don't know why that is um anyway uh I-, I thought they had regular minecraft which made sense to me but no it's minecraft dungeons that makes less sense because regular minecraft i mean they have it for the phone why not give it touch controls yeah uh yeah but anyway okay i guess giving it to only 10 games for now is yeah it's it's like a beta they're trying uh, it out yeah 
says for each title that uses Xbox touch controls, we've cre- we've worked to create an experience designed specifically for that game on mobile devices. One important step in the process was creating our touch adapt adaptation kit for game developers, which enables studios to easily map controller buttons to touch controls, as well as create native touch controls designed for mobile uh, games. So it looks like, you know, in addition to just having the buttons pop up and whatnot, developers can customize um, their touch controls per game. It seems like that's required. It seems like they want the developer to make specific controls. Right? From what you read, it's, it sounds like they they have a toolkit and they want developers too. And that's only why there's 10. Touch controls have been one of the top requested features for cloud gaming. So to build this collection, we work closely with players and game designers to create a familiar experience and support a level of play that you're used to with a physical controller. For each title that, for each title that uses Xbox touch controls, we've worked to create an experience designed specifically for that game on mobile devices. One important step and the process was creating our touch adaptation kit for game developers, which enables studios to easily map controller buttons to touch controls, as well as create native touch controls designed for mobile devices. As we develop our knowledge around touch controls, we're also taking the opportunity to learn a few things about how these controls work in different games. With the team at Ninja Theory, we worked on Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice to integrate touch controls and how they show up in different scenarios and game modes. As a result, you'll see the controls change as you move around and fighting controls will appear when you encounter the Northmen. So, 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 so at- for other games, we added touch controls without modifying the existing game. Uh... Hotshot Racing, we added touch control throttle that provides the same control that you would get from an analog triggers on the controller. Just tap the handbrake button, spin the wheel, and you'll find yourself drifting around the track in no time. In Super Lucky's Tale, the controls will feel very familiar and will even take a bit, a little bit of Lucky's personality. So it sounds like you can just try to mimic the Xbox controller as best you can, or you can customize the controls to specifically fit your game uh, for touch screens. So interesting here is in the bullet points, it has dead cells. But mm-hmm. Dead Cells isn't on the list at the top. It's only pictured. Right. And the top has Minecraft Dungeons, but the p- bullet points don't have Minecraft Dungeon. But the uh, they mentioned Minecraft Dungeon in the body of the right. article. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I'd assume eventually they'll just let everybody... But they're going to have to make it customizable for the player. Because yeah. if, if you need an analog trigger or something that mimics an analog trigger, they're going to have to do something for that. Anyway, that's cool. I think Game Pass yeah. streaming is going to be a really big deal to everybody when it becomes widely available. Mm-hmm. Or I guess more people realize how great it is. Um. Next, we got Cyberpunk Delay to December. Yeah, um, this is already after multiple delays and the game going gold, which means it's basically done. Yeah, done and ready, and ready for everybody. And- done and ready to be printed onto disc. Um, so this is from uh, CD Projekt Red. Hello, everyone. Today, we've decided to move the release date of Cyberpunk 2077 by 21 days. The new release date is December 10th. Most likely, there are many emotions and questions in your heads. So first and foremost, please accept our humblest apologies. Emotions. The biggest biggest challenge for us right now is shipping the game on current gen, next gen, and PC at the same time, which requires us to prepare and test nine versions of it. Xbox One, Xbox uh, One X, compatibility on Series X and Series S, uh, PS4 and PS4 Pro, compatibility on ps5 pc and stadia uh all while working from home since cyberpunk 2077 evolved towards almost being a next gen title somewhere along the way we need to make sure everything works well and every version runs smoothly we are aware it might seem unrealistic when someone says that 21 days can make any difference in such a massive and complex game but they really do Some of you might also be wondering what these words mean in light of us saying we've achieved Gold Master some time ago. 
Passing classification or going gold means the game is ready, can be completed, and has all of its content in it. But it does not mean we stop working on it and raising the qual- and raising the quality bar. On the contrary, this is the time where many improvements are being made which will be distributed via a day zero patch. This is the time period we undercalculate it. We feel we have an amazing game on our hands and are willing to make every decision, even the hardest ones, if it ultimately leads to you getting a video game you can fall in love with. Uh, every time I see this yellow, uh, you know, like note, I'm like, all right, here it comes. Yeah. They're delaying it yeah, again. Not, not a good, not good. Do um, we know how many times they've delayed this game so far? They delayed it at least three times this year alone. Yeah. So, I mean, a delayed game is better than a rushed game. Right. It's fine that they keep delaying the game. You know? Like, well, so here's the thing. Yes, they delayed the game again. Um, but this is coming after it going gold, which usually means it's done. Right. Um, they just ship it out. Um, also, it's been reported that uh, they are mandating crunch. Right during the last few weeks of development. And now the mandate has been extended by three weeks. Right. This is why certain people, this is why certain companies are, or this is why people are outspoken against pushing back games because uh, you're just pushing back the crunch. You're adding more crunch. Right. People think that pushing a game back will mean that you can spread out the work, but Really, yeah. you just push it back for crunch. And this is a... They p- said that they're going to mandate crunch to their employees. Uh, and now they're right. going to extend that crunch by 21 days, which is a yikers, yeah. dude. Um, but yeah. I, I, wanna, I feel like... I, I want to read... There, there could have been a... I'm sorry. There's okay, a, there's okay, a yeah, delay. Yeah. GameStop tweeted, yeah. take all the time you need to get where to get the game where it needs to be. And then Scott Perry over here, some guy, tweeted, don't encourage this. If you can't deliver a game seven plus years after announcement, then you shouldn't be in the games industry. CD Projekt Red are an absolute joke, okay? A company now. Joke of a company now. I'm going to write... Uh, uh, all right, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> nah, I was going to, but now, I'm, now I'm, I don't feel like clowning on him anymore. <laughs> uh oh here we go ross o'donovan says it's all good take your time and then ash some guy says it's not okay it uh it's not good is it is it though man people book time off work for this yes just yesterday oh that's true this happened can we stop <laughs> release dates it's it's like games are shipped with delays as an epic pre-order bonus so this was a funny thing that I saw. Somebody tweeted at CD Projekt Red yesterday or at the Cyberpunk Twitter account and said, hi, before I book the 19th off of work, can I have fully full confirmation the game was going to come out that day? No take backsies. And they said full confirmation <laughs> and then they delayed the game. Wow. I think that's a stupid reason to be mad at the, at the delay. I think being mad that-, that, that, that there's a delay because of the crunch is a perfectly reasonable mm-hmm reason to be mad uh so cyberpunk was initially scheduled to be released on april 16th of this year in fact the original release date was baked into an early trailer uh for the game as an easter egg along with copies of the witcher 3 (laughs) so in no go on go on in january the game saw its first delay when it was pushed till september 17th Around the same time, executives announced uh, the company's investors that it would require a lengthy crunch period, requiring employees to work long hours in order to, uh, to be completed on time. Later in June, it was delayed once more to November 19th. So how many times is that? It's three times. In total. From a- Yeah, from April to September, from September to November, and now from November to December. You know, that's, I was expecting more, to be honest. Right. Um, so, yeah, like, it's usually when a game gets delayed, it's not that big of a deal. Like, all right, take all the time you need. Uh, it is a little ridiculous that they can't keep, they can't lock down a date. Like, they can't lock down a date. Um, also, too, they, they 
said last year that they would make sure that they did not have to uh, go into crunch for this game. Mm-hmm. Like they've done everything they can to not do that. And then they did that. And now they're extending it. It seems like there's some mismanagement issues. It definitely. I mean, they're saying that the problem is because they're now doing it for all of these systems. They're doing it for, you know, current gen, next gen, PC and Stadia. The, the original promise of the game was just Xbox One, PS4 and PC. Everything else can wait. <laughs> right. You know, we will get the next gen versions when that when that's done. Uh, it'll come to Stadia when it comes to Stadia. I mean, Stadia is a PC game. It, it shouldn't be that different from regular PC. Right. So it's it's just unnecessary work because they think it's what we want. Really, what we want was the game we were promised all those years ago, an Xbox One, PS4, PC game. Not yeah. a PS5 game, not an Xbox they keep Series adding stuff. They keep adding right. their own work, really. Yeah. Um, this is this is uh, not that this is going to be anywhere near the same thing. But when one of the reasons why Mighty Number no. Nine sucks so bad <laughs> is because they kept adding systems to the Kickstarter for like what the game would launch on. And yeah. when you do that, you have to, you know, account for the lowest common denominator, which was the 3DS. And then they had to make the game for the 3DS. The Xbox 360, the PS3, the PS4, the Xbox One, the Wii U, the Switch, the PlayStation Vita, the PC, and all these, like, it keeps adding and adding and adding to the point where, you know, you lose track of what you're doing and all the versions suffer because of it. I, it's, I wonder what going gold means anymore. Like, it used to mean the game is ready. This is what's going to be printed on the disc. Any work we do from now on is going to be in an update. Yeah. However, how quickly can they make discs now? Like, maybe they're still working on the disc. Well, especially if they push it back. If the game is gold, Mm -hmm. and it's so, okay, so the game is gold. That means it's been shipped to manufacturer, it's going to be pressed to disc, and it will be sold in stores. How, How buggy and unpolished is the game right. that it requires three extra weeks of polish for a patch. Right. That's that's why I'm starting to think that maybe uh, going gold doesn't mean much anymore. Like, like maybe they can well, get it printed quicker than that. Well, I feel like, you know, especially within the last few years, going gold just means like we can start selling it. Because a lot of games now are aren't really good until like the first two or three patches. It may, maybe they realized they needed to make updates for all of these different consoles, and that's right. what's causing a, a right. bottleneck. But again, like not that many people are going to play this game on Series X or PS5. They're going to play it on the system they already own. And also, too, like, how important is Stadia to you? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but, I mean, this is a game I'm going to play for two seconds on a stream when it comes out. And then go, it's cool. And then get too overwhelmed and then never play again. Yeah. So I'm not, I know this is something that people are really excited about. Personally, uh, I'm not, like, overly hyped. And, and I think that they're kind of shooting themselves in the foot by uh, hyping it up this much by and continuously disappointing their fans. Like, yeah, it's okay to delay a game, but to delay it three times in a year, <laughs> there's a, there's a management issue. And yeah. then, Oh, here's another thing. Uh, this really gave me some perspective. Um, so super meat boy forever mm. has, uh, it was supposed to come out last April. Yeah. Uh, we played it. Yes. It was at two packs. Yes. I think it was April 2018 it was supposed to come out. Yes, because that's the one I went... No, I... Because I went to PAX last year. And I think it was supposed to come out that year. No, you went to PAX 2018. No, no this PAX is 2020. We're in 2020 now. Yes. 2019 is is when... 
uh yes you went to pax and when i first played super meat boy forever yeah it was supposed to come out april 2019 uh and then they just decided uh, it'll come out when it comes out and that was it there was like it'll come out yeah. when it comes out we don't know when it's gonna come out and it still has not come out it's been over a year and it has not yeah. there's no word on a release date or anything and the super meat boy twitter account said now do you see why we didn't put a new release date and I was like, okay, I get it now. And for a while, I was like, why isn't Super Meat Boy setting a release date? It was like, they actually said it was basically done at yeah. PAX in 2019. So that was like early March or something. Um, and then they just, and then there's still no date or anything. And now I completely understand. It's better to have no release date than to keep delaying that release date. Oh, I mean... On the flip side of that, you have a game like Duke Nukem Forever, which didn't have a release date, and that got pushed by 15 years. Well, don't push and the game it we got was years, little, then. The game we got was a little less than stellar. <laughs> Just saying, there's a, there's a flip side to that as well. Fable Forch, F- Fortitude, thank you for the Prime sub, and Triton, that one guy, thanks for 15 bits. Hey, Wolf Bros, I've been really enjoying the relaunch podcast. Are you excited for Mandalorian Season 2? If so, anything in particular you guys hope they implement in the new season? I still have never finished the first season. Oh, dude, it doesn't take that long. I know. Uh, I am very excited. I hope it's good. <laughs> I saw- okay, I was I was thinking of this the other okay. day. Jedi Fallen Order mm-hmm. and Rogue One could have easily starred Kyle Katarn in some capacity. Yes. And neither one of them did. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Mandalorian, uh, John Favreau has, compa- has compared it to basically fan fiction. It is the closest to officially licensed fan fiction as you will get with Star Wars. Mm -hmm. That is leading me to believe. That sounds like imposter syndrome. Yeah. (laughs) But, well, he he also said, like, it's like we got a whole bunch of the crappy Star Wars action figures and accidentally a Boba Fett. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, but that's leading me to believe, especially if this season is going to have Boba Fett and Ahsoka Tano and a couple of other, like, you know, fan favorite surprises. It is very possible that Kyle Katarn shows up not as a Jedi Knight, but as like his mercenary mode from Dark Forces. I think that it, that is very a very big possibility. I am not saying that's going to happen. However, if it does happen, I will squee like a little girl because that would be just the best thing. The Mandalorian is post episode three, right? No, episode. Six, right? Yeah, it's post. It's five years after Return of the Jedi. Okay. I mean, I would really love Kyle Katarn, but I think that he's been completely forgotten by everybody who works in any official capacity. Yeah. I was saying this like I've completely fallen off of Star Wars. I did not play Fallen, uh, Fallen Order. Uh, none of the games have interested me. I I wanted to play Squadrons. I did yeah. not. <laughs> and I just the, the Disney movies. I liked them when I watched them, and then after a while, I was like, you know what? I really don't think they were that great. I, you, you know what the problem is? I think, you know, they they just they they had a good start, mm-hmm. but then I think they their overconfidence got the better of them. They thought they can do like Marvel release one movie a year, but that doesn't work with Star Wars. That that's not a franchise that's built like that. No, it's got to be hyped the hell up. Yeah, and then the beauty of Star Wars was that it goes away, and then it comes back when you least expect it. So, had they just done the the regular trilogy, like the seven, eight, nine, and you know, stuck with the original intention of Colin Trevorrow doing Episode Nine? Yes, Carrie Fisher's passing like through a monkey wrench and everything. Um, but had they stuck with that, they could have had something spectacular. Yeah. I, you know, there would have been people who gotten mad because Force Awakens is just a retread of Episode Four. The Last Jedi upended, you know, the Star Wars canon in ways that it really didn't. And then uh, whatever the, la- the third movie would have been would have probably done something dramatic. But at least it would have 
uh, been consistent. It would have meant something and it would have, you know, it would have been its own thing. Instead, it tried to do too many things at once. And by the time Rise of Skywalker came out, it wound up pleasing no one. And I'm somebody (laughs) who will stand by the first four Disney Star Wars films. I think they're all really good, sometimes even great in their own right. But just by the end, you're like, they, they burned you out. And that's something you don't want to feel with Star Wars. You don't want to feel burnt out by it. Yeah, The Last Jedi was definitely the worst one. Uh, <laughs> you're an asshole. <laughs> Small Dog Mom says, Kanye West on Star Wars. Did you see that clip? No. Kanye West was on Joe Rogan and he said, uh, uh, the Disney Star Wars were worse than the prequels. And that is wrong. That is completely wrong. That is the, completely the pre- wrong. He's a psycho. I've, I've like softened on the prequels considerably over the years, uh, but there is no denying that they are not better than no. Force Awakens or Rogue One or Last Jedi. Uh, Just a hair in the chat says, heads up, Wario64 put on Twitter that the Metal Gear Solid vinyl soundtrack is $35 on Amazon. And I looked and I opened Ooh. it up. It is $35. However, it is not the Mondo print. Uh, the Mondo mm-hmm. one is the one that I want. The Mondo one is very now nice. Frickin' a hundred dollars. Yeah. I don't know who made this one. Konami? It says Konami. It's got Gray Fox's head on the cover. That's yeah. pretty cool. Uh all right. Well, let's plow through the rest of this. Um oh. Notifications. Fable four to two with Prime. Thank you. Oh, I read this already. <laughs> I read this already. All right. Uh, Apex Legends on the Switch is coming out next year. Wah. Uh it's a shame. This sucks. I really wanted to play this on the Switch. This would have been the perfect Switch game, but Hey everyone, you know, this at least, is at least what? I was going to say at least you could play this game on other systems. <laughs> True. Hey everyone, this is Chad Grainier, who sounds like a fake name, uh, game director on Apex Legends. Earlier this year at EA Play, I announced our plans to bring Apex Legends to new platforms, including Steam and the Nintendo Switch. Today, I ha- I want to provide two quick updates on that, as I know players have been asking about it. Bo- First, for PC players, Apex Legends is officially coming to Steam when Season 7 launches November 4th, 2020. If you play on Steam you, uh, and you're new to Apex Legends, we can't wait to welcome you aboard. And if you've previously been playing on Origin, feel free to give it a spin on Steam. All your account progression and unlocks will carry over between the two platforms. Second, for those who game on the Switch... We're still hard at work on the project, but in order to justify, uh, to do justice to the game and make it into the great experience Switch players deserve, our team needs more time. This year has brought it on unexpected new challenges, to put it mildly, and we don't want to rush anything out. Switch owners can expect to get their hands on Apex Legends next year, and of course, when Apex Legends does launch on Switch, it'll come with support for cross-platform play our latest seasonal content and full feature uh parody with the version with other versions of the game we can't wait to get apex legends to your hands or your tv connected dock on switch (laughs) so uh that's another thing they previously weren't cross play or cross progression so they're trying to get that working as well as the switch version working Right, because they know that people who are going to play it on Switch probably played it on other consoles already. Yeah. Uh, so I think this makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the you know, EA for some reason just doesn't put games on Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, this is part of their initiative to do that, put games on Switch. Um, so if they this is difficult for them if they need like the time to like figure that out, especially if they're, they want to do cross play because that's the big thing now with multiplayer shooters. So I understand why there's a delay in it. It just sucks that, you know, it's another game that got delayed. So, so, so I, I still don't understand if it's going to have cross progression. It seems like it does between steam and like origin, uh, yeah. but it's just, and full feature parody with the other versions of the game. They specifically didn't say cross progression. Yeah. Uh, which means that like, if you pick it up on switch, you might have to migrate your account or something. Yeah. 
I think it's important to note that a game like Fortnite, the Switch version was the cr the crossplay was a little broken in that the Switch version was a little nerfed because the uh, the the like time to kill was tied to the frame rate and Switch being a lower frame rate meant it took longer to kill people. So right. there's all these weird things you got to take into account when you're doing crossplay. So this is a delay that I completely understand. Also, it's the first delay of the Switch yeah. version. <laughs> uh real quick we got nba 2k unskippable ads give me the give me the tldr on this so basically nba 2k just keeps putting unskippable ads in a in a game that costs 60 dollars to the consumer and they're ads that go like in the loading screen so like you, there's really nothing you can do and they're they're just basically commercials they're just they're actual commercials um and the thing is, like, you're paying sixty dollars for a game. Usually, you only get commercials in a free game to right. offset that. So, Ew. I mean, I understand. I understand why it's there. Of uh, the 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 NBA two K games are expensive games to make because they got to pay a lot of money to every single NBA star. Um, they got to get the licenses for all the teams, all the. Uh, logos like Nike and stuff to put on the jerseys. Um, so they need to make this money some way. So yeah, sell ads for it. Also too, they'll say like, oh, it's like watching a real NBA game. You get all the crappy ads and whatnot. <laughs> um, but it just becomes excessive and, you know, needless. It just, it, it if anything, it could take you out of the gameplay experience more so than put you into it. So that's it. You know, they just keep, putting ads and again and also too this is a game with microtransactions out the wazoo yeah people always complain that these games are not that great and they put less and less work into them yeah so uh that's upsetting ea over here yeah. trying to get more oh no it's 2k it's 2k but it's the, same, it's the same idea because the nba 2k like yeah nba 2k usually does review well for the most part but they're doing the same thing mm -hmm. you know microtransactions ads um glorified roster update you know that's upsetting uh lastly yeah. we have an uh, nathan drake looks at naked drake in the looks nathan drake looks at naked drake in the first pictures of sony's uncharted movie so real quick first the first thing that happened was uh nolan north the voice actor of oh. nathan drake from the video games posted a picture of him hanging out with tom holland who's playing nathan drake in the movie on set of the Uncharted movie. He posted a, a cute little blurb, uh, the SM on screen, and then he posted two props from the movie that kind of, that kind of do look like uh, they could fit in the game. So that's what happened first. Then, uh, later that day, uh, why is my computer not cooperating with me right now? Uh, Tom Holland posted a picture of himself in costume as Nathan Drake. Oh yeah, that's uh right here. And, yeah, that's that's Nathan Drake, all right. Uh I saw one comment say like he doesn't have his shirt half tucked in, so it's not faithful to the source material. Um but other than that, he's got everything. That looks that looks like every cosplayer I ever see. I got a dog in my lap. Oh, look at that. Oh. Oh. Let's see if he eats by headphone cable. <laughs> he looks great. Yeah. And yeah, I did see the tweet saying he didn't have his headphone tucked, uh, his shirt tucked in. Rue, mm -hmm. you're going to ruin my cable right now. Okay. Uh, not included, but uh, posted somewhere else. Mark, uh, Mark Wahlberg is playing Sully, which is just awful casting, but <laughs> he grew a mustache for the role. So at least there's that. Yeah, let me find that. Yeah. I finally watched the Nathan Fillion Uncharted fan film that he did from like three years ago or whatnot. That was very good. And I feel like maybe if you're going to do a live action Uncharted, keep it under 15 minutes. <laughs> There's Mark Wahlberg with his mustache. He just says, don't ask, don't ask. Don't ask. Yeah. Don't fucking ask. There it is. Uh, I think he, this looks great. I don't know what they can do with a movie for Uncharted. Honestly. Yeah, because that's the thing. Like Unch Uncharted is an interactive movie. That's yeah. why you play it. To remove yeah. the interactivity of it, it's just Indiana Jones, then. It's just Romancing the Stone. It doesn't work. You go see those movies instead. 
Uh, all right. That's it. That's all the news we have. Yes, finally. M. M. Krause, mm -hmm. thank you for the Prime subscription. Uh, tweet of the week or unboxing? Unboxing. All right, I got some things to unbox. How am I going right. to do this with a dog in my lap? While you do that, I just want to talk about how I finally got my Baroness and Cobra cy cycle uh, thanks to some random store on Amazon that was selling it for a reasonable price. Uh, <laughs> very happy about that. <laughs> My G.I. Joe collection is getting way too big for this tiny house that I live in. All right. So I got some things here. Okay. Oh, that's that's a lot of things. Yes, it sure is, Will. Uh, okay, Rue, do you want to stay or you want to go? What's going on here? All right. So the first thing that I got is from PDP. Okay. It's right here. Uh, this is the... Rue, could you please... This is the wireless sans fill. Oh no, that's that's Spanish, isn't it? <laughs> it's the wireless face-off controller. Oh. The, the one where you can replace this the front. Yes, yes. Uh, they uh they made a wireless version now. So you can replace the the cover of this. You can put the Wolf Den cover, but they don't sell yeah. it. We try to get them nice. to sell it. They won't do it. Um so now uh now they made a wireless one. The reason why that was such a cool controller was because it also had a headphone jack. Yes. Uh, I don't think this one does. Okay. Okay. It does? I don't. I thought I saw it on the bottom. It doesn't look like it. Oh, it doesn't need a knife. Now you oh, know where Bob keeps it. It does need a knife. I ordered a butterfly knife today, Will. I thought those were really? illegal. I thought those were illegal. So I ordered a practice one, and then I was like, let me just see. And it yeah. turns out you could just buy them. You know what I think is illegal? A gravity knife. Yes. That's think, what's illegal. I think they sometimes construe butterfly knives as gravity knives because you could use gravity yes. to open it even though you would just cut yourself. Yeah. Uh, there is no headphone jack. Wow. Disappointing. But it has the paddles wow. on the back, which is nice. And it's wireless, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. Rue, if you jump off and you take my headphones with you, I'm going to just throw you out the window. Uh, now, here's the trick, Will. Mm -hmm. Hey, you did it. Yay. <laughs> here's the trick, Will. Uh-huh. Let's pull a Nick Cage and the other guy. John Travolta. Let's take the face off. Off. And let's see... Do I have the Wolf Den one with me? I don't. Ah. Uh, I assume that it, it would work, though. Right. But, you know, just looking at it, isn't it amazing how we all look like that on the inside without, <laughs> beneath our faces? This is cool. Uh, I will give it a shot. I don't know if I'm going to make a full video on it, but if I find it interesting enough, maybe I will. Next up, though. Oh, it also comes with an actually decent sized USB cable. USB C? Oh, that's good. No. Really? Micro USB. Disappointing. Oh, that's actually disappointing, yeah. Now, this is from Retro Fighters, which is great. Oh. Which is great. Yeah. I don't know why there's so many. <laughs> so, Retro. Well, who's Retro Fighters? Uh, hold on. Let me just look up because I confused them with another company. <laughs> They're the ones who make the uh, N64 controller, the modern N64 controller, the modern uh, yes. Dreamcast controller. Modern Dreamcast controller. I think they also made a modern Genesis slash Saturn controller. They for did. You they super did. nerds out there. They did. Um, but so these are controllers uh, from these classic systems designed with modern uh, ergonomic sensibilities and things like that. Uh, they fit in your hands better. The buttons are in better placements. Um, and overall, it just, it just feels more like a modern controller than like whatever weird controller originally came with these systems. Uh, so they've so done I, great work. I kickstarted this. Okay. It's the it's the uh, Dreamcast. Uh, it's the Dreamcast controllers. They, didn't they send us Dreamcast controllers? I, oh, these are the colored ones. Yes. Now we have a million of them, Will. Oh, wow. I might. So I wanted to make a video. Oh, there's a black uh -huh. one. So I wanted to make a video on this. Um, mm -hmm. But 
I didn't because I know it's not going to get a lot of views. Uh, but I still might make a video because I want to make a video on playing a Dreamcast in 2020. You know, mm -hmm. like we have the HDMI out. We got the whole, yeah. you know, uh, Frame Meister situation. We got these dope controllers. So, like, there's a lot to talk about on how to play a Dreamcast uh, yeah. in the modern day. Uh, which one should you know, I open? Uh, I like that black one, even though it's not, <laughs> it's not one of the translucent colors. What I think is cool, though, is I think all of those colors were colors of original, official Sega Dreamcast controllers. Like, the one Sega made. Don't eat that. Don't eat the box. Actually, you have our Dreamcast? I took it because I wanted to make this video and then I never did. Right. Okay. I'm not opening the black one. Uh, I will okay. open the green one because that's the coolest looking one. That is a cool looking one. Uh, do we have four players? Oh, we have Power Stone. Power Stone. Welcome the thing, to the, the Power is, Stone world. <laughs> the thing about the Dreamcast is like, I have fond memories of playing like games like Dreamcast games with my friends. I I can't think of many like four player Dreamcast games other than like Power Stone. I used to play the hell out of Power Stone with people. Yeah. I mean Power Stone's a great game, but like I want compared to the N sixty four, I can name like ten off the top of my head. I want to put my thumb here so bad. I know. But there's nothing there. <laughs> now if Retro Fighters wants to send us ten uh four brawler sixty four controllers, that'd be we have that would be in business. We have one. We have one of those. We also have uh the Hori no, the Hyperkin one. Right. And that's it, I guess. <laughs> yeah. This is really cool. I'm in, I'm into this. I, when I first saw this, I was like, Dreamcast doesn't need a new controller. It it you don't think it does, and then you like hold it and then you're like, uh, oh, maybe this could be a few improvements. And like this is the is like a good improvement. This is good. Uh yeah. I I don't have a dreamcast controller within my reach to show you the differences but uh yeah. you can just tell it's this is more modernized uh it only had a left and right trigger uh and it the 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 grips were weird yeah uh this is a lot more modernized more comfortable for your for your big ass hands uh so yeah i might still make a video on that anyway uh tweet of the week time Oh, you don't. Twitter the week. Oh, right. No, Sorry. we have a thing. We have a thing that yes. I I still haven't made a, like a like a button for it, but here it is. Oh, I have to download it. This is gonna this is gonna take a minute. Well, why don't you just do it? Twitter the week. Twitter the week. Oh, you only gave us okay. You you already gave us one, so you like gave us a pause and then did the other two. Oh, I did all three. I'm playing the the thing anyway. Just gonna take okay. a second. Hell yeah. This is from Ice Cream Sandwich. Uh, there's audio to this, Will, so you gotta pull it up yourself. Oh, crap. I closed down my key. I think I woke up my baby. <laughs> That's it. It's just a hand pressing down on a little squishy man. But like he's a bongo. It's very funny. You gotta see Every, it. Everything I'm... I'm trying, damn it. Everything is falling apart in front of me. You don't have to see it. Just the people at home have to see it. It's Ice Cream Sandwich on Twitter. He makes great uh, little animations on YouTube. Uh, all right. Anyway, now is when we talk to you people. Yes. Uh, do I Should I do my spiel or... No. What? <laughs> talk to us okay. here in the chat. The highlighting helps. The chat. You can donate to us or you can just leave it in the comments on YouTube. We will read it there on the following week. Uh we have comments from the follow from uh oh. from last week. I have to open up Discord in a different window though, or else you'll lose yeah. Will. Oh, I can't. Okay. Well you're just not gonna have Will for a second while I read these. All right, goodbye. Oh wait, I can pop you out. Here, you're popped out. Wow. Look at that. That's wow. a that's a wow. That's amazing. Wow. Wow. 
Boop. You're just huge. That's okay. Uh, Wolf Den My info. Looming. <sighs> Dust off the server. Uh, Christoph Skalski from last week's Wolf Den uh, podcast on the Wolf Den podcast YouTube channel says, good to see the podcast back. You guys were the staple of my work day every Thursday morning, and I was really missing it when Wolf Den Live ended. Well, we're back. Tell your freaking mothers. Yeah. Ivory Mantel. Uh, yay. So glad that the podcast, that there are new podcast episodes. I'm from Europe, so I'm relying on the YouTube uploads. Have missed them the past few weeks, but listening to Bob and Will chatter was great again. Thanks for listening from Thank the great you. old UK. Shadow the Light. I can relate, sadly, to Bob's pr uh, device problem. Lately, I have also had random USB disconnects. My best guess is it's the newest Windows update because I've asked many people and nothing has really worked. I find it happens more often when doing uh download on five band than 2.4 band but that is all i could dedu deduce i recently did a major update on windows that everybody says broke everything uh however i've had this problem for a while how my webcam would just disconnect and now apparently this one does it too i have a completely different webcam that I, that will is using to watch me uh and apparently this one's not any better i'm just gonna try a different usb port see if that works Matthew says, I can't stand the guy on the left. He's so obnoxious. I like that Fred left this in. However, he didn't re he didn't leave in the comment immediately under it. And I Which was going to I was going to tweet this out. Mm -hmm. I, I have to get it exactly right or else I was going to tweet this out and say, I love this community. <laughs> uh, you also miss uh, Jade and Golden. The new intro mesmerizes me the same way a uh, PS2 boot up does good that's what we were going for right <laughs> that yeah absolutely there are a lot more comments than i was expecting oh here it's the last comment all the way at the bottom because youtube's algorithm really effed him yeah uh matthew says i can't stand the the guy on the left he's so obnoxious then realms gaming says shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> And that is why I love this community. Uh, good right. people. Uh, now we're in the chat. Yes. Uh, unpop this out, please. There we go. Yes, make me normal size again. All right, read some chat. All right. Uh, what we got? Uh, Triton, that one guy with 15 bits cheer one cheer one of a whole bunch of times hey wolf bros i've been really enjoying the relaunch podcast you oh read that already mandalorian uh m kraus three uh with a prime subscription colombian sarcasm with a prime subscription and great junior ny resub with prime for three months what's your guys dream video game movie hmm uh, did you see that uh, Netflix is going to do an Assassin's Creed TV show? I don't want that. Yeah, I don't want that either. I don't I want, want that at all. That, uh, that I always thought bad. I would want a faithful adaptation of Resident Evil. Um, I don't think I want that anymore. <laughs> I don't want an adapt. I don't watch many series, you know? So, like, I don't need yeah. my video games to be in a different art form. The problem is, like... You know the games are fine enough as it as they are, you know, and they're, they're so visceral as they are. They don't need to be made into, you know, a two-hour movie, a two and a half-hour movie, or a, a TV show. I mean, it probably work better as a TV show because you have more time to go through all the things that you do in the, a twenty-hour game. But you remove the interactivity element of it, and it's just like, what's the point? So. Um, Noah, know, man. Noah, thank you for the Prime subscription. Thank you. Thank Trying that you, one guy, you. Bob. In past videos, you've said you weren't a fan of Pikmin. However, you are going to give Pikmin Three Deluxe a try later this week. I am not. <laughs> uh, I don't know 
what made you think that? Uh, yeah. So I talked uh, again on, I think the Finax War podcast or something. I talked with AJ. We discovered that the multiplayer is not online multiplayer. So mm. there goes that. That's not happening. Yeah. Dog, why are you attacking me? Why are you viciously attacking me? Please. I am... I am... Please. Please help me. Uh, the Jump Bro says, Will isn't obnoxious. He can't even spell. Haha, ha, joking. Don't ban me. Uh, joke's on you. I can't. The dog was trying to eat the knife. <laughs> <laughs> you are not a magician. You can't do that. Uh, I, you can't spell. I can't read. So, yeah. So there you go. We're perfect together. Uh, diet Shri Shri. I I butchered your name. Uh, will have you read Batman Three Jokers number three? Uh, I have. Uh, I don't like that series, but I will say this: the last issue was probably the best. It did a really cool thing at the end. Um, that I wish was part of regular canon and not this weird black label canon that's like unknown if it's actual canon um i just feel like it was part of a story that was more set up than payoff and the the payoff is good payoff but it deserved better setup is what i'm getting at so issue three was the best issue of the series but it did not was not enough to elevate the entire series uh, in my estimation. Saeed says, do you think streaming services on Switch will drop the same time as PS5 and Xbox Series X? No. What, do you mean Netflix or do you mean like xCloud? Yeah, because xCloud won't come to Switch for a long time. Uh, I think it's no to both. I, yeah. I, 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 I think there's no reason Netflix coming to Switch would line up with any releases out from any other companies yeah um but yeah i also think that x cloud it would be a while to come to yeah to switch um oh my god all right i'm just purple i'm just purple oh wait i lost all audio right. from you oh no there you, are. there you are uh all right uh saeed specified he meant netflix yeah, I don't think there's a reason for that to line up. Reset your camera input? Yeah. Uh, what? All right, tell me how to do that. Do you mean on Windows? It's been cam link for like a billion years. Uh, yeah, like when you can change your brightness on your camera. Yeah, I've never... I, so, so now I'm using the Razer Keo because the uh, the uh, the stupid uh, Logitech kept disconnecting, and now the Razer's yeah. doing it. So, and you can't. There's no settings for the Razer Keo. Yeah. I, I unless uh, there's some global window settings, I can't figure out how to do settings on the Razer Keo. Oh look, it's Eddie with a hundred bits. Is Super Smash Brothers Wii U Deluxe worth getting? Wait, wait, guy with hair says you're good now. No, okay, dick. <laughs> the, I, me being purple was because the rays are disconnected, and that's easy. You just go to properties and hit disconnect, reconnect, um, or deactivate, activate. Um, there are settings for all of it. No, you don't know what I'm. You don't know what's happening. Yeah, I don't just got like here. So yeah, me. don't act like you know. E, you don't know what's happening. I'll explain everything to you later. Yeah. Uh, is Super Mario Brothers Wii U Deluxe is worth getting? 100 bits. Thank you. Oh, Eddie. I thought that was Super Smash Brothers Wii U. Thank you. Oh, look, it's Eddie. Uh, Super Mario Brothers Wii U Deluxe. If you've never played it before and you have, you, if you've never played it before, yes, it's a good game. Especially if you've never played it before like, and you like Mario, yes, that's what I was going to say. Especially it's same brain. Mario because it's of that style. Uh, Bob, when did the Android mode on Switch? Did you play COD Mobile on it? I did not. I did not do that. Oh, that I gotta, would have been a good game. I got to play xCloud on it. Yeah. But that's a whole video. Uh, Noah, 100 bits. Are you going to try Age of Calamity? Yes. But that's not for another month. Mm. 
Update your USB drivers. I actually did right before I started the podcast. Uh, Fable Fortune game series trans games to series trans just transitions aren't a failed medium. Castlevania did it pretty well. It helps when you have actual fans creating the series, not just money hungry studios. Um, I feel like animation has a slight advantage because games are also technically animated. So there's that same level of suspension of disbelief that's there when you look at something animated, uh, whether it's uh, a TV show or a video game. So that's why I think that kind of helps. But at the same time, you still have to deal with, you know, the removal of interactivity. Uh, MX Sparrow brings up the Witcher series, the Netflix Witcher series. The, the Witcher is different because the Witcher people forget is based on a book. That's true. That's a good point. So the, the games are based on a book series. The TV show is based on the same book series. There's just, there's a consistency in the style and the look of the Witcher uh, that's traveled between the show, the game, and even some of the, the Polish made uh, movies that they've done of the Witcher. I, I just I think that video games are in the same place that comic books were in in the 90s. Uh, yes. There were some good adapt, uh, movie adaptations. Uh, most of them were very bad. And that's where we're at now. And eventually yeah. we will get some good ones. But also, why do we need them? We don't need them. Yeah. Video games are fine as is. In fact, they're bigger than the other mediums. Yeah. I think we need to... There's this, there's this idea that uh, um, adaptation, a movie adaptation is the highest form of compliment that a piece of media can get, whether it's a book, a TV show, a comic book, a video game, uh, a toy line, what have you. If Hollywood says they're making a live action movie on your property, that's the highest compliment that you can get. That means that your thing is a serious piece of art and it finally made it, even if the thing is crap. Just like um, how uh, I sent our father the ESPN eSports video on Tim the Tatman doing yeah. Fall Guys, and he just yeah. sent me a text saying, send your tapes to ESPN. Like, like that makes any sense. Uh like it's not it's not validated unless ESPN puts it on their uh exactly 60,000 exactly. subscriber YouTube channel. Yeah. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for hanging out everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. Ladies and gentlemen, the Wolf Den podcast can be seen every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. right here on twitchtv Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we will have it, an archive version of it up on youtube.com slash wolfdenpodcast. And also an audio format, please go to anchor.fm slash wolfdenpodcast or check your preferred pod podcast service of choice. Podcast. You will find an audio pod. I need a new outro, so give me a second to figure out. I'll have one by next week. You got to write it and report it. That's yes, that's what I need to do. But yes, uh, anchor.fm slash Wolfden Podcast or your favorite podcast service of choice. Uh, that's where the audio version of this will be. Uh, also, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. Did you talk about that? I did. Yeah, go there. Slap a like on it. That helps us. Hey, I appreciate y'all being here. Should we raid somebody? That's a thing you could do yeah. on Twitch. I know you could do that. I We didn't do this last week. No. Uh, hmm. Who is on right now? Anybody? Oh, Scootish. Here, everybody go watch Scootish. We'll have yeah. him on the podcast someday. Guys, go over there and, and call him a bitch. Go over there and say, <laughs> you bitch. Guys, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll be here again next week. I will be, I might stream tomorrow. I'm not sure, but I will definitely stream Thursday. Uh, we gotta play more Pokemon. And you know what? Scoot is playing Pokemon right now. So go over there, call him a bitch. He'll be like, what? And then have a good time. And we yeah. will see you all later. Goodbye. Bye.